from that will do something. Okay. Now, what we've been working on is how to, we got all this rhythm down and we did a lot of ear training and you guys can pretty much write rhythms and the new people I think are kind of updated now as to what we're doing here. Uh, we're taking it now to the next step, which is I'm now going to teach you all how to actually read music on the staff. And uh, here's the problem with reading music on the staff. The way it's taught with the ABCs is the problem is it's a very left brain process. And it's so left brain, it requires a lot of memorization. For instance, we have things called sharps and flats. And you have to remember how many sharps and flats there are in each key signature. There are 12 basic keys, but there are 17 spellings of those 12 basic keys. This is something that no one talks about but me. The rest of the world's in denial. <laughs> um, now, that reason for that is there are seven white keys. And they each only have one name. And their names are A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then that pattern starts over again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So there's seven white, white keys. So there's seven scales of white keys. Okay. But there are five black keys. Three plus two. Or Two plus three, how do you want to see it? They're black keys. Two black keys, then three black keys. Two, three, two, three, two, three. So there's five black keys, right? Now each of those black keys has two names. For instance, of the group of two, the first one on the left, it's either called C sharp or it's called D flat because it's between a C and a D. So if I'm looking from D down the keyboard, I see it as D flat. But if I'm looking at the C and I'm going to go up the keyboard, I'd see that same key as C sharp. Now, everybody in the world who does jazz knows how to spell the D flat major scale. But nobody wants to learn how to spell the C sharp major scale. Because it's hard! <laughs> the D flat's easy for musicians to memorize. The C is harder. Because in the key of C, you get a lot of sharps beyond four sharps. You get like how many with seven. seven sharps? There's seven sharps, and that there's seven notes. So that means every friggin' note's been modified with a sharp. And that in some spellings, we get things like uh, double sharps. So if a spelling has double sharps, that's more than seven sharps. Who wants to memorize that? So when they can memorize the same thing as five flats rather than seven sharps, they'd rather go with the flats. So, get saying. so now, there's a, the second black key there is called either D sharp or E flat. Now again, E flat is real easy to memorize. It's only two flats. So everybody, you know, I mean, sorry, three flats. So everybody likes to memorize that E flat. But D sharp is hard to spell. <laughs> it requires a lot of sharps. So what happens is, for the black keys, the five black keys have gotten five favorite names that everyone uses, like D flat, E flat, F sharp, A flat, and B flat. And that's what people call the black keys. But guess what? They're also C sharp. It's also a D sharp. There's also a G flat. There's also a A sharp. And so for those five black keys, we have 10 possible spellings. The five that everybody likes to remember and the five hard ones that everyone wishes they could avoid. Well, guess what? All of them aren't that hard. Especially using the old method where you have to memorize. Yeah, it's all right. It's all left brain, okay? But in order to read music and be able to play it with emotion, it has to be a right brain process. So how do we turn something that requires all this memorization, rote memorization, into something that anyone can do with their right brain without thinking? <laughs> and that's, there's the problem. And no one's come up with a method except me. I'm the only one on the planet Earth that I know of that teaches reading and writing music as a right brain function. And it turns out that the brain is quite capable of doing these things. There's just one caveat, and that is, the brain is sexist. I'm sorry, girls. Yours is too. <laughs>
Oh yeah, it is. Every, every boy and every girl has a sexist brain. One of the things that our brain does is it looks for odd or even things. Mathematically, sex, male and female, would be broken up into, uh, masculine and passive, would be broken up into addition and subtraction, basically. And what happens is, the brain is quite capable of doing these things. But it needs to know whether the numbers it's working with are odd numbers or even numbers, and it treats them slightly differently. For instance, there's po three possibilities in any mathematical formula. Either you're going to get uh, an odd number, or an even number, or an even number. Now, it seems interesting that even outweighs the odd, but to think about it. What's uh, 2 plus 2? Four. So two even numbers equal an even, right? Okay. What's 3 plus 3? So two odd numbers equal an even number. Let's try that again. What's 9 plus 3? Ooh. Okay. What's 6 plus 12? No, 6 plus 13. So what happens is the only time you get an odd number is when you have an odd, num an odd number of odd numbers. If I have one odd number and one even number, it'll always come out with an odd answer because it's always one more than even. Odd could be said, stated as one more than even. If we thought of the entire world as being even, <laughs> and odd is a condition in which it's one more than that, then what happens is any mathematical formula uh, that Albert Einstein said, by the way, this is proof that the universe is left-handed because there are two even possibilities and only one odd possibility, and the only time you can have an odd answer is when you have an odd number of odd things. So to him, that was proof mathematically that the universe was left-handed, that it rotated in one particular direction, and that it expanded a certain way, and that time only moves in one direction. Whoa, all those, you got, you got all that from that. <laughs> okay. So here's the thing, if you want to change reading music from a left brain thing to a right brain thing, we have to take advantage of this biological built-in imperative. And what we need to do is recognize that in music, the numbers of music come in two types, odd and even, and then we have to treat them slightly differently. And if we know which is coming, it's easy to guess. And if we don't know which is coming, then we have to stop and use our left brain to figure out whether the number is odd or even, whether it's male or female. So the first thing we have to do is attach some notion of gender to the number. And once we have that stringed out, the rest is a snap. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Here, okay? Now, we're using a staff. And the staff, again, I'm going to teach you something that isn't taught anywhere. There are four million websites that teach music theory on the internet. There are 80,000 websites or sites on YouTube that teach music. On all four million websites and in all 80,000 websites on YouTube, everyone teaches exactly the same thing, folks. Now, I don't care if some snake oil sa salesman says, oh, I've got this technique for teaching you to play the piano. I'm going to show you how to play rhythm piano. And you're going to learn faster. Blah, blah. Okay, so he's a one-trick wonder. But the, the language he's describing and the, the method he's using is the same as everybody else's. And I'm glad he's got a trick up his sleeve that he can charge you $8,000 in two years for. That's, you know, it's okay. That's capitalism. But I just want you to know that there's as many free websites online that will give you the same information as paying for the lessons. And I'm not saying you shouldn't pay for a good teacher. You should pay a good teacher just because he's a good teacher. Pay for the knowledge. But I just want you to know, you don't have to be stuck thinking that only these people that are paying a fortune to teach blues piano, for instance, know how to do it. The truth is, is there's many websites that teach it for free. And the websites that teach it for free, and I've looked at over 4,000 of them, they all are saying exactly the same thing, exactly the same way. So, you know, I'm not going to cover all that same material because everybody else is doing that. So what I'm going to show you here is something completely different that nobody else on the planet Earth is doing. So the people out there on the web watching us can learn something, come here, come here and get something completely new.